everybody. Today I'm going to show you some of the amazing shibori resists that you can create out of Jacquard's Indigo tie-dye kit. Inside the box you'll find there's an instruction manual that not only has detailed instructions on how to use the indigo, but also some information about the plant that the dye comes from, and also a brief history about this rich dye that has been with us for centuries. Other items that you find inside the box will be the dye powder, the reducing agent, and soda ash that you combine into your bucket to create your dye vat. You get some wood blocks, some popsicle sticks, and some rubber bands. And these all create really cool shibori resists on fabric. Shibori is an ancient Japanese technique of binding the fabric in a way to create a resist. And is traditionally used with indigo dye. Let's start with what you can do with the rubber bands. I can pinch the center and pull up a bit and then put a rubber band around my fabric. The tighter I get the rubber band, the brighter white in the center underneath my rubber band, or the more contrasting the resist will be. You can continue with rubber bands down the row and it will make concentric circles. The circles are typically not perfectly even. They usually undulate After you've dipped this in the indigo, the result is something like this. Another cool way to use the rubber bands is to do an accordion fold. So with your flat fabric, fold it back and forth like you would a fan. Just like a paper fan. Then you can bind it with rubber bands. This one I folded. You could even use your popsicle sticks on this one too. And then it's ready to dye. The result of this resist looks like this. Now let's take a look at blocks. Using hard pieces of wood or in different shapes or even plastic can create some really unique geometric designs in this type of shibori. Here I'm going to fold my fabric in a symmetric way, so in half, in half again, and one more time. And then I'm going to place my block on top and on bottom and secure it tightly with rubber bands. Another shibori block resist can be using these popsicle sticks. Here I did the same thing. This is a piece of silk where I folded in a symmetrical pattern and then secured my popsicle sticks with rubber bands on either end so it's a tight fit. And when I remove them I see the beautiful geometric pattern that comes out. The key here is really just to fold in a symmetrical way. So here I folded this in half, in half again, again, continually folding in half, and then at the very end, I folded it into a triangle and put my popsicle sticks mm. on. There's really not a wrong way to fold these. Folding them symmetrically with your block resists create beautiful geometric patterns, but you can get a little wild and crazy with it too. Simply bunching your fabric up and binding it with the rubber bands in random ways gives you a very random pattern, but really a beautiful result. So these are some pants that I did that just turned out fantastic. Let's take a look at some ways to go beyond what's inside the box with some things that you may have around the house. One is C-clamps. These are great to add extra security to any of these block resists, 
but they create their own resist as well. Since they tighten down and have a circle at the bottom, you can actually create a polka dot resist using a C-clamp. So these are a lot of fun to play with. If you want something a little bit bigger and still circular, you can actually use CDs as well. CDs create a very cool block resist print. You can also use any sort of cut acrylic pieces as well. Anything that's going to be stiff enough to withstand some pressure on it and not give way to create a good resist. If you like using the rubber bands as a resist and the effects that they give, you can also use zip ties. And Jacquard Products makes a reusable zip tie. So after you've used it once, you simply slide it right back out and you can keep it and use it over and over again. You can also make really cool crisp prints on your fabric using a water-based resist. Jacquard makes a water-based Gouda that is fantastic for this. Or even Elmer's glue works, as long as it's the washable type. Both of these will wash out when you go to rinse and launder your piece. But when they're in the fabric, they create this fantastic resist. Simply put your fabric down, place a stencil on top, Choose whichever medium you're going to use, squirt it along the side, and trowel it across your stencil. This will embed it into the fabric. You let that dry, and then you're ready to dip. The result can be really fantastic. Here's a hand towel that I did a stencil print on. You can make shirts with these, just about anything. Some really fantastic way to make a resist with indigo dye.